if, if somebody's going to try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go fuck yourself. You know, it would be a whole lot easier to get behind that statement if Elon Musk was not himself an evil hypocritical drug dealer. No doubt you think that I'm either insane or at least overstating the case, but I'm not. Elon Musk is an evil hypocritical drug dealer. And he's far worse than the average drug dealer because at least they are up front about it. Elon is doing it without you even knowing it. Now, I usually like to um, qualify my statements relating to computer science by mentioning that I have both an AS and a BS in the field. And I spent 40 years in computer science. Not IT, mind you, computer science. Because when I started out, there was no IT. It didn't exist. Standing on the shoulders of the giants who came before us, my generation, I am early Gen X, by the way, built IT. We commercialized the internet, grew it, and to global proportions. So um, you're welcome. Unfortunately, with the mass adoption of such a useful technology like the internet came its evils, and social media is one of those. Now, at first glance, social media looks benign, even helpful. However, over the last 12 years, computer scientists, psychiatrists, and psychologists have done unassailable research that proves that it's incredibly destructive on multiple levels. The worst thing about social media is that it messes with the dopamine system in your brain. Now, most people think of dopamine as the chemical responsible for pleasure, but that's not really the case. The current scientific opinion is that dopamine confers what is called motivational salience. In really stripped down simplistic words, and please don't kill me biologists and psychiatrists and psychologists, but what really means is that dopamine signals motivation. It causes you to behave in a way that will achieve a goal. Social media triggers this. Now in practical terms, you're on X, you see a post, dopamine is released in your brain and you're motivated to read responses to that post and then you're motivated to read another response and then another response and another and another you'll probably be motivated to post or respond to other posts which motivates you to read more posts you keep doing this forever you get into an unbreakable loop of constantly reading and responding to posts and this is why young people by the way can be motivated to self-terminate if they're the subject of targeted online bullying. They are trapped in an unbreakable loop of reading endless posts about just how horrible they are. And it's why you are constantly glued to your phone. You are trapped in an information-seeking loop from which there is only one escape. Quit social media entirely. Now, unfortunately, this is easier said than done. When you quit, you will experience symptoms remarkably like opiate withdrawal. Anyone who has ever quit an opiate will tell you that it is one of the most miserable experiences in existence. And I don't typically talk about it, but I became an opiate addict following a sinus surgery. I was prescribed hydrocodone and didn't quit for about 18 months. I have been sober since January 1, 2024, almost 20 years now. Um, sorry, I was sober since January 1, 20. 2004, so it'll be 20 years now, just next um, January. But I remember it very explicitly because I went cold turkey, and the next three days were the worst experience of my life. The three months after it were no fun either. But I've also quit social media entirely. It wasn't a fun experience, but nothing like quitting opiates. Uh, I now use social media solely to advertise my videos. And I don't feel very good about that because it encourages people to um, use, uh, you know, social media. It's a genuine ethical dilemma for me because using social media to post my videos is akin to what Elon Musk is doing. And Elon Musk is a legitimate genius. While he produces more failures than successes, does anybody remember the Hyperloop or the fact that we're now supposed to have bases and colonies on the moon? Anybody? No? Well, you can't ignore things like SpaceX. Now, while I believe that his desire to buy Twitter in, was in order to rid the world of the woke and it was genuine, he, however, has not lifted a finger to do anything about your addiction. 
And there is absolutely no way that he doesn't know about the information seeking loop. All social media giants are aware of it. In fact, not only are they aware of it, the information seeking loop is an integral part of their business models. Because if you weren't motivated to constantly read one post after another, X couldn't survive. And Elon Musk is perfectly aware of this. And indeed, he dare not do anything that would alter this. Elon Musk is intentionally allowing X to mess with the dopamine system of your brain. This is tantamount to being a drug dealer. Now, alongside creating an information-seeking loop in your brain, social media, particularly X, is destroying civilized discourse worldwide. It propagates wars. It probably has already started one. I'm not sure that it hasn't. But it is directly responsible for the rise of the woke in the last 10 years. Now, the woke make up a fantastic minority of the civilized world. But X makes it possible for them to commiserate and become bullies, frightening both individuals and companies with what is really non-existent power. Before the internet, people might discuss politics over the backyard fence with a neighbor. However, they had to self-moderate, not telling them every last detail that they believed and certainly not vehemently disagreeing with the other person. If you didn't self-moderate, a male neighbor might just decide to deck you, and a female neighbor might start to cry. In either case, you'd be considered a jerk, and no one would want to associate with you at all. Social media just encourages no moderation. Everything becomes a bunch of words on a screen, all screaming at each other like crazed harpies. Now, Douglas Adams actually predicted this in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. In that universe, the Babelfish can translate any language whatsoever. However, by effectively removing all barriers to communications between different cultures and species, it has caused more and bloodier wars than anything else in the history of creation. And this is social media, particularly X. The unfortunate reality is that human beings have such diverse and opposing viewpoints that it's imperative that we not understand each other. It turns out that understanding and tolerance only leads to hostility. And this is why I find myself in an ethical quandary. I am perfectly aware um, of the information sticking loop. I am perfectly aware that social media is destroying civilization. Yet, in order for people to see my videos, I must use it for publicity. The unfortunate reality is that as a small libertarian YouTuber, Google will not show my videos to YouTube users at all. Its algorithms are explicitly designed to squash viewpoints like mine. And this leaves me with only social media to spread my videos. I have reluctantly made a compromise. I publicize my videos, but otherwise I do not engage on social media. I will only engage my viewers via comments. Um, this actually helps my videos anyway, because YouTube's algorithms weight videos based on engagement, which really is just another way of saying comments. So I strongly urge you to quit social media entirely. Instead, like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and to comment on this video. You can mention my channel, by the way, on other videos comment section from other users. Um, you probably won't be able to link to any of my videos because YouTube will auto-delete that, but you can certainly mention my, my channel. But if you do that, maybe someday, maybe someday, I will not have to use social media at all. So thanks for watching this video, and feel free to help me publicize it, just not on X, because you need to get off X entirely. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing the control and manipulation of minds.